Hi, welcome to Learn Stroke IAS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the daily Hindu news analysis with Arjun R. Shankar. The date is December 1, 2022. Let's today there are there are a lot of important news leads and news items so a uh, lot of news to study so sit back and uh, start learning. The first important headline as GDP growth dips to 6.3% as manufacturing slides. So this is very important. This article contains the, basically the GDP growth rate has slowed down to 6.3%. What are the reasons that is, the, the GDP has come down? And many other important news leads like what is NSO? And what is, what is the concept called GVA or gross value added? And what is the difference between GDP and GVA? So this is something that we have to know in this direction what is nso and what is the rangarajan commission and let's find out quickly the gdp has dipped to 6.3 percent and why is why do you think the gdp came down is basically because the manufacturing and mining output was very slow number one and the gdp sorry the gva uh, came down to 5.6 percent and there was high inflation and weak exports so basically the mining and manufacturing output was slow the GVA came down to 5.6%. Inflation was high and weak export basically made the GDP come to 6.3%. And uh, regarding NSO, NSO means it is the National uh, Sample Survey. Uh, it is very important. Previously, there was NSSO. This is not the uh, uh, NSSO. So you should know that the NSO uh, is created by merging the NSSO, National Sample Survey o Office, and uh, Central Statistical Office CSO. So NS, the concept of NSO was first realized by the Rangarajan Commission. And it is the st official statistical wing of Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, MOSPI. And moving on to what you mean by the concept of GVA or gross value added. Simple. Gross value added can be defined as output produced after deducting the intermediate value of consumption. That means output produced minus the intermediate value of consumption like GVA is equal to GDP plus subsidies on products minus taxes on products. So what do you mean by the difference between GDP and GVA? It's very simple. GVA is the value added to the product to enhance the various aspects of the product. It's a value added to the product to enhance the various aspects of the product. Various GDP is the total amount of products produced in the country. And it is said that previously uh, uh, India had been measuring GVA at factor cost and now uh, GVA is calculated at the basic prices. So this article is very important from GS paper 3 Indian economy perspective. Let's move on to the next important article. Here we go. The Supreme Court said to look into the Bilkis Banu petitions against early response of 11 convicts. So this brings us to an important area of GS paper 2 polity and governance. And uh, you should know who is Bilkis Banu. What is the case? So Bilkis Banu was a 21-year-old uh, at the time during the 2002 Gujarat riot, uh, riots. Uh, she was uh, gang raped and she was pregnant and uh, more than seven people of her family were brutally murdered. So uh, what the present problem is, recently the Gujarat government decided to prematurely release 11 convicts serving life sentenced in this Bilkis Banu case. The Gujarat court is releasing 11 of those people prematurely. And this brings us another important question of polity. What is remission? Because uh, when you read about uh, president governor, you must have heard about concepts like the pardoning powers, like pardon, commutation, respite, reprieve. So what is the difference between uh, pardon, commutation, respite and reprieve. In this case, it talks about remission. So what do you mean by remission? Remission means reducing the period of sentence without changing its character. For example, a sentence of rigorous imprisonment for two years may be remitted to rigorous imprisonment for one year without changing the character of the sentence. So very important for polity perspective. Moving on to the next important news is India-US exercise near LAC irks China. So a joint India-US military exercise, Yudh Habyas, was conducted in the line of actual control. So this brings us GS paper to international relations. What is the line of actual control or LAC, Yudh Habyas? And China says the joint military exercise between India and the US near the LOC 
in Uttarakhand, close to 100 miles from the LAC. LAC is clear violation of the spirit of the agreements that India signed with China in 93 and 96. So uh, read it from the international relations perspective. Moving on to the important one, GS paper 2, Jiang Zemin, who oversaw China's economic transformation passes. He's a former Chinese leader who led China during a decade of extraordinary economic growth. Passed away, he was 96. His legacy will be always re remembered for China's economic reforms and growth. The economy grew five-fold during his time to almost 340 billion in 89 to almost 1.47 trillion in 2002. The return of Hong Kong, entry of China into the World Trade Organization in 2001, everything is actually a landmark moment in Jiang Zemin's time. So please remember about that. Next is uh, Southern Indian News, 8,380 birds curled in avian flu hit of Alapura in Kerala. So this brings us another important question. What do you mean by avian influenza or bird flu? So what do you mean by avian influenza? It is a, a flu disease caused by infection with avian or bird influenza type A virus. These virus naturally spread among wild aquatic birds worldwide and can infect domestic poultry and other birds and animal species. So normally do not infect humans, but sporadic human infections is also occurred. And uh, the important, including the two strains that have most recently infected humans is the H5N1 and H7N9. When it when the bird flu strike humans, it's very deadly. So GS paper to health perspective, you should know this concept. Next is CCB, the central crime branch of uh, nar narcotics wing. Uh, has busted the e-cigarette racket. So this brings us to another important question. What do you mean by e-cigarette? What are the pros and cons of e-cigarettes? And uh, e-cigarette comes in many shapes and sizes and most e-cigarettes have a battery, a heating element and a place to hold a liquid. The e-cigarettes produced aerosol by heating a liquid that usually contains nicotine. And it has got other flavorings, etc. The users inhale this aerosol into their lungs and most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which has many bad health effects, like it's highly addictive and it, it is very toxic and create damages to the brain and create uh, uh, cancerous and a lot of other things. So these are some of the important cons. Read it from GS paper 2, health aspect and GS paper 3, technology aspect. Very important article on GS paper 2, polity and governance. Cabinet allows bill to remove governor as chancellor. So recently there has been a lot of debate every time governor versus chief minister and chief minister versus governor is an always debated topic. So here in Kerala, it's very important. The Kerala government is going to propose a new bill removing governor Arif Mohammed Khan as the chancellor of the state universities. So you know that the governor is the chancellor of the universities and the Kerala is going to have a bill to remove the chancellor from the state university. So, and they want to replace the governor with an academician who is appointed by the government. So that means apart from the governor, govern government is going to have a more power in this. So uh, this is something that needs to be discussed from a, uh, what is the role of the governor you should know and what is the governor versus chief minister, what is the larger issues. In such cases, you know that uh, the when governor is not having, uh, governor will not have an overseeing power over the university. So. This is a big important thing to be discussed. So uh, <clears throat> moving on to the next important editorial is unseemingly conflict. This also is another fight between the Supreme Court and the government regarding the election. Sorry, I mean um, appointment of uh, judges and transfer of judges. Just like governor and chief minister is having a conflict. Here the conflict is between the executive and the judiciary. So in this context, you should know what is a supreme court collegium what is a collegium and what is ngac or national judicial appointments commission and it's all regarding the appointment of judges and uh, let's see an important mains question for gs paper 2 in a dynamic democracy like india relationship between the judiciary and the executive relations can face strains and recorrections analyze so there can be fights between executive and judiciary and uh, the supreme court is hearing a contempt petition against the government for not approving names reiterated by the collegium and the government is not acting on the file and is keeping the appointments on hold so how what is the appointment of judges what is collegium you should know this very detail 
Next is cease and desist. It's a very good article for GS paper to uh, governance perspective regarding elections and uh, the Bruhat Bengaluru Mahanagara Palikas decision to cancel permission to an NGO, an educational rural development NGO, which was conducting a house to house survey to enhance voter awareness. But instead, it was claimed that instead of creating voter awareness, they collected the voter identification detail, which can actually uh, uh, create a negative impact on the election. So that is why uh, the, the the top uh, NGOs decision was a very bad thing. And the, the, the government's move, the Brahad uh, Mangaluri Mahanagara's Palika's decision to cancel is uh, one of the uh, very good thing that it has done for uh, having a fair election. So some, something you can quote in uh, any GS papers. The next important uh, editorial was regarding the party Congress over understanding the China puzzle. It's very reg important regarding the China's preparedness because the 20th party Congress international relations GS paper two, the 20th party Congress of the Chinese communist party was held in October. And uh, the president Z has given the order to his generals that enhance your troop training and be prepared for any combat has got international attention. So this is in regard to the Indo-Pacific preparedness that the uh, uh, China is having and also brings us to a larger question of China versus Taiwan. And in this context, what do you mean by Quad? And what do you mean by AUKUS? And how do you think India-China relations is going to be? Is it going to be smooth? We have to know. And the East Asia summit in Cambodia, the ASEAN head of states meeting in Cambodia, the G20 summit in Indonesia, everything has shown one thing that a lot of international community countries are coming against China with a common coalition. So China needs to be prepared for this. And this is China's preparedness. And very important from GS paper to international relations perspective. Next is uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, GS paper to health and Indian recipe to quell micronutrient malnutrition. So we must have heard about GS paper to health. We must have heard about malnutrition. So what do you mean by micronutrient malnutrition where uh, vitamins and minerals which are called micronutrients are the building blocks for health. So people who do not have enough of the minerals, uh, vitamins definitely face micronutrient malnutrition. So this article also talks about uh, the food security report for 2021, the global hunger index of 2021 and it talks about food fortification and it also talks about the fortification of rice, rice fortification and what are the negatives of fortification and also mains question for GS paper to health and uh, food fortification is a cost effective complementary strategy to address multiple micronutrient deficiencies discuss. So let's discuss what do you mean by uh, micro malnutrition? You say that every second Indian woman is an anemic. Every third Indian child is stunted and malnourished and every fifth child is wasted. So FAO food and agriculture organizations food security report for 2021 FAO food security report ranks India 101 out of 116 and global hunger index of 2021 with 15% undernourished population. And that is why people say that we need to have a food fortification. Food fortification is defined as the practice of adding vitamins and minerals to commonly consumed foods during processing the nutrition value. So adding a more vitamins and minerals is a food fortification and food fortification, fortification of rice is a very cost effective thing. And according to the FSSAI norms, one kilo of fortified rice contains uh, 28 mg of iron, a folic acid, vitamin B12, and addition there may be zinc, vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, and B6. So this is a good thing for country because, uh, and it talks about negatives because despite the country's success, uh, it has got uh, the iron overload of fortified rice has been dangerous in Jharkhand's tribal population suffering from sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. So it's not always a solution. Even high iron can also have a negative impact. So very importantly, read this from GS paper to health. Next important editorial talks about the uh, uh, towards a robust prime where it, this again talks about the chief election commissioner, the election, com uh, the other election commissioner regarding the election. How do we how do we elect? And uh, this is also a recent debate that is going on. Read it from GS paper to polity and governance perspective. So whether the election commissioner should be selected by the executive or by a collegium, what is the Dinesh Goswami committee and what is the uh, 
the justice m n venkatal chaya working commission report so recently different people have suggested different way of election commissioner election so the dinesh goswami committee 1990 suggested that the chief election commissioner should be appointed by the president in consultation with the chief justice of india and the leader of the opposition and the national commission to review the work, uh, uh, mn venkatal chaya said the chief election commissioner and the other commissioner should be appointed on the recommendation of a body comprising the prime minister leader of the opposition of lok sabha and rajya sabha the speaker of lok sabha and deputy chairman of rajya sabha and in the 255th report of the law commission chaired by ap shah said that uh, the election commissioners all the election commissioners should be elected by the president in consultation with a three member collegium consisting of prime minister leader of the opposition and the chief justice of india and there is a, so know about the election and it also talks about the removal of election commissioner because you know that the election commissioner can be removed either on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity the constitution does not use the word impeachment for the removal of chief election commissioner the impeachment is only used for removing the president so keep in mind all these aspects very important for gs paper to polity and governance next is layoff by it firms in the us uh will be greatly impacted h1 so you should know that more than thousands of employees from amazon facebook meta microsoft everybody is being sent back and they are not hiring so because the pandemic created a lot of opportunity online thing they actually increased the hiring and uh, with the uh, pandemic fading away they have started cutting down the employees so this is imp- uh, you know impacted a large number of employees working in india also so uh, massive layoffs can be a big problem read it from gs paper 3 uh the role of working employment etc and uh, national news very important 16 drones shot down along the pakistan border for the bsf so recently you know that a lot of drones coming from pakistan are being shot down by the border security force so this time it is very important that uh, uh, i'll give you a quest very important from gs paper 3 uh, security perspective border management drones have emerged as one of the key challenges for the force that guards the border and each time when a drone comes in the night it's very difficult to figure it out but the drones have a unique chip which carries information about the flight path and other details let's give let's give you a question drones in the new age have multi uses and challenges for the defense sector in india comment on that so talk about the good goodness of the drones and the challenges that indian defense sector faces from gs paper 3 uh, security perspective moving on to the important article again as the uh, the jamiyat ulama e hind seek supreme court status for dalit muslim so when you talk about jamiyat ulama hind it is perhaps the oldest muslim organization in the country and uh, during the uh, it was uh, formally launched in 1990 in the backdrop of khilafat movement and uh, it inherits the rich legacy of 18th century when shah wali waliullah of delhi led a revolution so during the khilafat conference uh, they constituted a new organization to carry on peaceful struggle and that was jamiyat ulama e hind and uh, maulana kifayatullah was selected as the first president so recently it has become the first organization to approve caste based muslim community members and in a significant move the jamiyat has actually requested the supreme court to include uh, the uh, dalit muslims into se status so what are the status of dalit muslims so have you heard about dalit muslims please uh who are jamiyat ulama hind so very importantly it is important from gs paper 1 society perspective gs paper 2 polity perspective and gs paper 1 history perspective i mean please for higher pension epfo staff as head office to guidelines so this is important regarding the pension a gs paper 2 government scheme what is epfo or employees provident fund organization so uh, employees provident fund is the main scheme under the employees provident funds and miscellaneous provisions act 1952 it is managed by epfo employees provident fund organization and it covers every establishment in which 20 or more people are employed and certain organizations are covered subject to certain conditions and under epf scheme an employee has to pay a certain contribution towards the scheme and an equal contribution is paid by the employer and the employee gets the lump sum amount uh, with interest on both uh, on retirement so no more about the epfo for gs paper to schemes perspective next is a gs paper to polity why constitutional validity of jammu kashmir reorganization act clause went unchallenged read this article from 
what is jammu and kashmir reorganization act and what is delimitation commission what do you mean by a delimitation commission and what is delimitation delimitation is the act of fixing or redrawing the limits or boundaries of a territorial constituency in a country or a province which has got a legislative body as per the election commission so it's actually fixing or redrawing the limits or boundaries of a territorial constituency read it from polity perspective 100 monuments to be lit up to mark india's g20 presidency gs paper one indian culture perspective because g20 india is celebrating the g20 presidency know this for a match the following in the prelims sarnath dhamik stupa fatehpur sikri sikandra in agra shore temple of mahabalipuram charminar in hyderabad the jageshwar temple in uttarakhand the hazar duwari palace in murshidabad west bengal and the ancient palace in leh are all in the list which is going to be lit up gs paper 1 and india's g20 agenda it talks about uh, g20 pres- presidency and i've got some important questions regarding this so you can just check it with the oldest known traditions of collective decision making india contributes to the foundational dna of democracy this is an essay question that you can find another question regarding gs paper 3 is india's advancement is creating inclusive digital public goods delivered revolutionary progress in fields such as social protection financial inclusion and electronic payments comment so how is india's digital public goods helping or revolutionizing the social protection financial inclusion and electronic payments you can comment this from gs paper 3 supreme court worried over effect of gm crops on livelihood of women farm labors gs paper 3 economy and the farmers issue very important you should know and this you should know what is a gm mustard and what is a genetically modified crops are gm crops meant for agriculture in indian context you should know because they are suited for western context where there are large number of farms so do you think in india it is viable find it out and what is gaac genetic engineering appraisal committee which is nothing but a statutory body constituted under the rules for the manufacture uh, microorganisms 1989 under the environment protection act 1986 so it is a statutory body so no more about this supreme court seeks center response on evolving a program to protect great indian bustard so this is again very important question on environment and biodiversity gs paper 3 what do you mean by project great indian bustard no more about indian bustard where can you find them the geography the habitats and what is project tiger which has been mentioned project tiger is the most successful conservation program for a single species in the world very important and recently a lot of indian bustards have been dying due to the power transmission lines criss crossing the habitat in gujarat and rajasthan so they are found in gujarat and rajasthan to a large extent 160 to 200 million indians could be exhausted exposed to lethal heat waves annually so this brings us gs paper 1 and gs paper 3 environment and uh, even climate expect so what is a heat wave and uh, it is said that from 2030 more than 160 million to 200 people can be exposed to lethal heat waves and around 34 million people will face job losses due to heat stress what is heat stress and uh, w- very important climate investment opportunities in india's cooling sector so there is cooling sector is going to have a climate investment opportunity and what is icap the india cooling action plan india cooling action plan is a vision towards cooling across sectors like reduction cooling demand refrigeration transition enhancing energy efficiency better technology option so this is icap and it also talks about pradhan mantri awas yojana let me give you a mains question india's schooling strategy can help save lives and livelihoods and reduce carbon emissions discuss x you can write this from this perspective so moving on this is very important from gs paper 3 and at least 20 tornadoes hit southern us relief shelter so when you hear this news you should know what do you mean by a tornado what do you mean by tornado what is the difference between tornado hurricane and an indian cyclone and also typhoon uk envils digital trade deal with ukraine meeting set to happen in london you should know what is the exact important thing happening in the uh, digital trade deal and next is russian chinese bombers fly joint patrols over the pacific for the first probably in a recent time the russian and chinese uh, flew a joint patrol over the western pacific to show the defense ties and uh, Uh, the china has uh, refused to criticize russia's actions against the us and nato and this also brings us china russian relationship how is india russia china rela- how is india russia 
relations going to affect gs paper to international relations india's core sector growth break to 0.1% in october so this is very important in this context regarding gs paper 3 economy you should know what are india's eight core sectors that means what is india's eight core sectors what do you mean by iip because the index of core industries or the core industries contributes around 40% of the iip so what are india's eight core sectors the eight core sectors are coal crude oil natural gas refinery products fertilizer steel cement and electricity and 40% of uh, core industries contribute to the iip iip is actually an index it's an index that indicates the performance of various industrial sectors of the indian economy it's a composite indicator of the general level of industrial activity in the economy so very important know it from gs paper 3 fiscal deficit touches to 45.6% so you should know what do you mean by fiscal deficit as a concept in gs paper 3 economy nbfc to grow aum by 14% so what is this concept called nbfc so what do you mean by nbfc the non banking financial companies and what do you mean by aum assets under management so what do you mean by aum the aum is the total market value of the investments that a person or an entity manages on behalf of the clients so it's a total market value of the investment that a person or an entity manages on the behalf of the clients so uh, assets under the man manage a aum is actually defined by different companies so normally they include the bank deposits mutual funds cash in the calculation so know what do you mean by aum for gs paper 3 economy perspective teleco seeks framework norms to levy usage charge on ott very important you should know that the telecom operators has written to the central to set a license and regulatory framework to charge a usage fee for the big internet based calling and messaging services like whatsapp signal and google dio they need to be charged a usage fee so why should there be a usage fee and what is tsp the telecom service providers who are tsp and the ott player should pay tsp for using the telecom network and there should be a usage charge so this is the latest news regarding so read it from gs paper 3 technology perspective to so, uh, i think these are some of the most important news leads that came in today's newspaper so read it understand and find the important answers and be prepared and keep listening to learnstroke is classes by arjun and do subscribe the channel and expect more such current affairs news exclusively for you thank you so much